Spain have won the World Cup, England were so close! Or were they? Because England may come to regret how they started this game tactically, because as we saw, Spain had them all figured out. What we see was that Spain play in a 4-3-3. Now Spain in the World Cup had the most possession, the most passes per game, the most shots per game. Do you know how they're going to play in a 4-3-3? They've got these players here. Now England started the game like this in a 3-4-1-2, but England finished the game looking like this, with Millie Bright, a central defender, up top next to Beth England, another big player. So why did they go from that formation that worked in the tournament to this one by the end. So England started the tournament playing a 4-3-3. Serena Wiegmann loves a 4-3-3. And what they had was the fullbacks overlapping, your players coming inside, and uh, Russo trying to make runs to get on the end of crosses. But the key to it all was Kira Walsh playing in this position here as a number six. Now she's pivotal to this England team because she is the pivot, which means that they play through her a lot. So all England's passing moves rely on Walsh being able to move in and out of space to get on the ball. Now the first problem England had was they weren't really creating very good chances. They get a lot of shots, but teams were able to lock them down. Haiti were decent against them. And in the second game against Denmark, same sort of problems in attack, but crucially, Kira Walsh got injured and had to come off. Now, they replaced her with Lauren Coombs. And they have options here, but none who can replace what Walsh does for England. She's absolutely integral to how they play. But assistant manager Arjen Vurink had an idea and suggested to Wiegmann that they change the system entirely to a back three. Now, this meant they could play Millie Bright in the middle, Carter to the right, and that means they could play Greenwood as more of a centre back rather than a left back. That means they could bring in Rachel Daly over here. They can move Hemp inside next to Russo. They've got a nice dynamic there. Then you can play Stanway in the midfield next to another midfielder. Kelly comes out here. Bronze can get further up the pitch. You've got wing backs rather than full backs, so they're all your width comes from here. It's a bit safer defensively as well. And this changing system meant that Lauren James could come into this position behind the forwards, where she was so effective, especially against China. And China couldn't deal with the changing system at all. England won 6 1. You had Katie Zellum next to Stanway. It worked really, really well. And because it worked so well, England were creating chances, looked defensively solid. They're getting all the most out of their wing backs. Vigwin stuck with it. And in the final, what you saw was the same back three, the wing back starting as well. Zellum was out because Walsh had come back earlier from injury ahead of schedule and then Lauren James didn't get back in the team because of her red card and Ella Toon came in. Wiegmann likes consistency. Now there are things about the setup that I think they may come to regret because Spain knew exactly how they were going to play. England wanted to try and win the ball back against Spain. They wanted to play really high. The big problem was with these two players, Lucy Bronze and Rachel Daly, because as part of the high press, they had to push up and get close, like this. But doing so meant that you had an England's back three of Carter, Bright and Greenwood. Now they stayed quite narrow and quite close together, which meant that these players, Redondo and Caldente, could pull really far wide. And as Spain were able to get the ball through somehow, they could get into these areas and it left lots of space in these wide positions. And so what they were doing was that maybe England could try and get a little bit closer like this, but that leaves a lot of space through here. So again, if Spain could get through here, that's not a good idea because Parejo against Bright is a match that Parejo will win if the ball's on the ground. Now these spaces are really important for both how England want to press and where Spain want to attack. Because what you see is with Daly and Bronze pushing up here from early build-up, so Spain are building from the back here, these two can stop the ball coming out here, but they can't stop a long pass out here. That's the job of the defender to go out and get close to them. But if these players drop in a little bit, like this, then suddenly it's not clear who should go out, because Greenwood can't really go out this far because it creates too much space between these two here for someone to just jump into, or someone to jump into like this. So you can't really do that, you can't afford that to happen. And so what they were doing was dropping Caldente or Redondo slightly deeper, and then Daly might have to retreat a little bit. And when they did this, it then meant that this pass was free, so Spain could play through. But because England are good defensively, and Carter's reacting to any balls played into this wide area, or Greenwood's reacting to any balls played into this area as well, where Redondo is, they were able to keep Spain quite quiet for the start of it. But as Spain grew into the game, what they were doing more and more was moving their wingers inside. So if they moved Caldente in, which did a lot, to this sort of position here, what ended up happening was Hermosa was playing behind as more of the 10, with Caldente moving inside, then you had Abiera and Bonmati, and they were getting a 4v3 against England's midfield. And this gives Bronze a difficult decision to make. Does she come inside to mark Caldente and leave her position free? Because if she does do this, that leaves Carmona to come outside and overlap. Or does Carter move out? And if Carter moves out, then does that leave space for Hermoso to get in behind to be more of a forward? Both are difficult questions to answer. And we saw this in how Spain scored their goal. So let's look at where the goal comes from, because on the face of it, it looks like Lucy Bronze has made a big error here, but there's more to it in my eyes. So here is Bronze on the ball. She carries it from right back and she sees this space. You should always attack the space in football. Now, no one's moved into this space to try and receive the pass. Therefore, why not just carry it and break the lines with the ball? Lucy Bronze is great on the ball. And she carries 
is it? And then more space opens up further ahead of her. Look at Spain trying to retreat now. She's got teammates either side that are pushing. This is three players beaten. Bronze carries it in. It's created an overload for England in a dangerous position. That's really good. Now as she carries it inside, naturally Spain trying to show her inside the pitch. And what you have here is Ella Toon wants this pass played now. But Bronze knows she can keep moving into the space where the referee is. Now Bronze carries this inside. Still, what you have is Bon Mati is waiting in position in the midfield. Now, She's predicting the pass is going that way because she knows exactly where Toon is. But Bonmati has waited to try and pounce on the pass if it goes. So Bronze waits and knows that if she waits, what's going to happen if Toon moves to this position? Is there's loads and loads of space. She points. She points to where the space is. If Toon just goes here, that's a ball in behind. And what you get is all this space and Toon could run into it and England to progress and get really far forward. But Toon doesn't go. And so Bronze is kind of trapped now. She's in a really dangerous position herself. He's got three, four players around her. Can't release the ball in time. Toon's not there. And that's why she's so frustrated because if Toon had gone, they could have released the ball. It could have been a dangerous attacking situation rather than now a very dangerous defensive one. Because when you look at the pitch and how it looks now, here's the space. The dangerous space that Bronze has left vacant. And so now Spain's left winger, Caldente, is entirely alone in space but she will drop into midfield space. But as she moves inside here, that leaves space for Carmona to go. Stanley's more in here. Now, as Carmona goes up above, Russo tries to track her, can't get back in time, and Carmona is the one who gets in here to score that brilliant low shot into the corner. And that's the goal that wins Spain the World Cup. And so, Wiegmann made the change at half time to go back to her trusty 4-3-3. And so the shape became the 4-3-3, or more of a 4-2-3-1 when you move Ella Toon up like this. And that's what you had. That's what they started the tournament with and what Wiegmann likes, and she reverted to it. And it solved some problems immediately. What you had was Hemp can lead the press with James and Kelly either side. So now you can lead the play to either side of this and kind of make sure you're still protected wide. But you've got Carter, who's a right-footed, more of a centre-back than a left-back, dealing with Redondo, who was dangerous throughout. And that's not a perfect tactical matchup either. If Wiegmann had been even bolder, and maybe moved Greenwood out more of a left-back than Carter, that might have helped them a little bit on this side when Spain were getting forward. But regardless, Spain still had them locked down. They were keeping the ball really well. Loads of nice combinations, lots of lovely passing triangles where they're pinging it around. England couldn't get close and they started to panic. And as they're panicking, they started throwing the ball forward more quickly and that's when they start to lose shape and Spain's possession-based game really comes into its own. Hemp up here is not the best one to take it down. A player like Alessio Russo is much better at keeping the ball and maybe shielding it to bring in others. But she's gone off the pitch. So instead, on comes Beth England. She comes on up top to be the kind of player they can target with long balls from the back. But that's not working quite so well, so they eventually moved Millie Bright up. They really started to panic. Then you had Lauren James going to the right-hand side, sometimes on the left. Then Kelly was over here on the right sometimes, sometimes on the left. Hemp was meant to be left, but then Greenwood was pushing up as well to be more of a left here. Toon was gone. Stanway, Walsh. Then what you had was something like Bronze, Carter, and maybe a bit of Greenwood sometimes back here. There was no real shape, and Spain could drop back get nice and tight, block the lines, and force England to play long balls. But it just didn't work for them. And the thing is, it's very easy with hindsight to suggest that the starting tactics were the wrong ones. It was two small errors that decided the game. But I wonder whether if Serena Wiegmann could play this game all over again, she might have started with the 4-3-3, they could better defend against Spain's build-up, they'd have more of a connection in the midfield as well, and then they could have controlled the game in the way that England have been able to throughout the tournament. That's how Spain won. They exploited the errors made by Bronze and Toon. They had the right system in place to exploit the shape that England were playing. And they were able to win in the way that suited them all the way through the tournament. They had the most possession, the most shots and goal, the most passes. They were the best team in the tournament. And that's the Women's World Cup. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.